Okay, so it looks like we have the majority of people, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, hope you all enjoyed the first session. Now we are going to be entering our second session on professional development, all about resume development. Um, so again, you know, please participate throughout. If you have questions along the way, come off mute, raise your hand, type in the chat box. We're also going to have a breakout activity as part of this workshop as well. But to get us started, I'm going to kick it over to Anne. So Anne, you can take it away. Thanks, Shannon. Can everyone hear me all right? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and I think I'm still seeing the first slide. There we go. Um, well, welcome everyone to today's session. As Shannon mentioned, my name is Anne Aru'u. I am a manager in our controls advisory practice. Um, I sit in the Seattle office and I've been with the firm for about four years now. And I'm joined today by Nadine. Um, Nadine, did you want to do a quick introduction? Sure. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. OK, so I'm Nadine Cooper and I'm a state and local tax director in the New York City office. And um, I will be co-hosting with Anne um, on the resume overview. So back to you, Anne. Awesome. Um, well, in terms of agenda, so here's a quick look at what we'll cover in today's workshop. We'll start off with a quick overview, um, move into the specific elements of a resume, um, and then we'll move out into our breakout rooms for the resume building activity, and then we'll wrap up with some reminders and Q&A. Um, as Shannon mentioned earlier, if you have questions, um, please feel free to come off mute or drop them in the chat as we go. Okay, so... Resume overview. What is a resume? Um, so in a nutshell, a resume should tell your story. Um, it's a reflection of everything you've done up until this point. Um, illustrates your background, your experiences, skills, interests, um, and abilities that are relevant to the position you're applying for. So it's a detailed account of everything you've done, where you've done it, and gives the reader a good glimpse into um, the type of employee that you might be. Um, so Resumes are mostly used to apply for a position, whether that be an internship, a campus job, part-time, full-time position, whatever it may be. Um, they can also be used for a variety of other reasons, right? So applying for graduate school, um, applying for memberships to a club or an organization, scholarships some, um, sometimes require resumes, um, or even for volunteer opportunities. Um, but in any case, the purpose of the resume really should be the same to demonstrate your experience um, and your capabilities in terms of fulfilling the requirements of whatever it is you're applying for. So resumes are used in these instances because it really is the best way to help predict um, your future success based on looking back at things that you've done in the past. Um, many times a resume is your first impression, so it's really important that it's accurate and concise um, while still telling your story in an effective manner. Um, what you learned in the last workshop was really the importance of a personal brand. Um, so it's really important to help articulate your personal brand through your resume. So as, a, as we mentioned, you know, a resume in a lot of cases are reviewed pretty quickly, sometimes even in less than 30 seconds. So as we mentioned, it's really important to keep it clean, organized, chronologically organized, um, and free of spelling or grammatical issues. Um, and we're going to walk through some specific elements of resumes as we move through this. But these points up on the screen right now are pretty important, no matter what kind of resume you're building or what the opportunity is. Um, so above all, keep it clean. Um, formatting is super important. I. <laughs> Definitely, it's something I think we take for granted that when it's formatted nicely, you don't think about it. But as soon as it's not formatted nicely, you notice it. Um, and I will say as a resume reviewer, I have noticed those types of things. So formatting is super important. Pay attention to the layout and order. And we'll go through this a little bit more in detail later. Um, but put more relevant or more current experience up top um, and less relevant things down at the bottom. Do use bullet points. Um, Obviously, we're not trying to read a whole um, essay, right? So really get those key points down to some bullets. And another pretty often overlooked but simple thing to do is always check your spelling and grammar. 
again, something definitely that as a resume reviewer, you do notice and that we take for granted. Um, and ultimately do try to keep it to one page. As we said earlier, resume reviewers do often kind of go through them pretty quickly. Um, so do try to keep it to one page and keep it really concise. Okay, and moving on to some specific elements of a resume. Um, so first is contact information. So it's important to always list your contact information up at the top. You really want it to be easily accessible for anyone reviewing the resume, um, and it should be accurate and professional. So first thing is your name. Make sure that's highly visible up at the top. Um, and contact information. It's really important to use the easiest contact information to get a hold of you. So a great example is your phone number. So if you list your home phone number, but you're not really home that often, or it's your parents' home number or something, right? That's always something to be mindful of. Use the number that's most relevant and easily accessible for you. Also your email, right? Um, we do recommend using a personal email as opposed to your school email. As in a lot of instances, your school email will disappear after a few months after you graduate. So being mindful of things like that. Um, also keeping in mind, if you do use a personal email address, um, try to pick something that looks a little more professional, right? So not like sunshine and daisies at hotmail.com, right? Be mindful of the type of email that you're using. Um, and address, that is something that we do see on some resumes, but definitely is not required to have on a resume. Other things you might want to include are your LinkedIn URL um, and links to any online portfolios that may be relevant to the position that you're applying for. With that, I think I'll hand it over to Nadine. Yes, yeah, so I'll do the um, education part. So the first um, part of your, when you do the education part of your resume, now that you're in college, you should take off your um, your high school information and you start with your um, with your current college. It's also very good to list your GPA. A lot of times when um, reviewing resumes, we look at GPA. Uh, most of the accounting firms, they look at GPA, so list your GPA. I would say even if your GPA is not as um, is not as high as you think, you should still list it because, you know, with your interaction with the recruiters, sometimes you can explain away why your GPA is um, is not as high as you want it to be. You know, sometimes you're going to school full time, you're working full time and you have, you know, there are other circumstances. So not because your GPA is a low number, that means that um, that is a bad thing, right? Because it's also based on your interaction with um, with the different recruiters that you meet to and um, and your overall, you know, you as an overall person, not just that one number in your um, resume that is important. OK. So um, when on your resume, once you do your, when you're doing your education, it's always nice to highlight um, special things about you that makes you stand out. Like for example, if you traveled abroad, right? You can highlight um, your experience about traveling abroad. Like where did you go? What location? What did you study? Especially if it's relevant to um, to what you're looking for. For example, if you're looking for a, um, a job as an accountant and you studied abroad for finance, you can highlight that. But even if you didn't study abroad for finance and you went abroad, that's a good conversation piece um, when you're having an interview, right? Like, I would probably want to hear about your study abroad other than, like, you know, what you do in college every day, especially if you're stateside. And um, if you're a transfer student, it's always easier or better for you to just list the college that you're currently attending, unless you have a degree from the other college. You know, sometimes people attend two, three colleges before you have a degree and that takes up space in your resume. So that goes back to like, you know, um, as a college student, your resume should just be one page, right? So there are certain things that you want to um, omit that's not, if it's not relevant. So one basic thing is your college is um, 
you know, to um, put the actual college you're going to, unless you have an issue where um, you have a significant significant gap because of um, going to a certain college, maybe you might want to briefly list the colleges just so they can see that your gap is, um, that your gap is just because, you know, you've been in school, but different colleges. So your education. So this is an example of how you would you would um, put your education on on your resume, right? You would list the school, your degree type, your expected graduation year, and that all important GPA. It's always good to put the your your current GPA and over how many how much points. Like for example, this one is over 4.0 because some colleges we have noticed it's not um, over 4.0. So it might be a little bit misleading if you just put a number and we don't know what's the um, total. So good point to um, always list both, both parts, depending on your college. So once you have listed, once you have clearly listed your education, your education experience, right? Now it's good to do your work experience. When you're doing your work experience, um, if you have several jobs, right, list your most current job first and also make sure that you um, your most current job is the one that you explain the most that would have the most bullet points, right? Because we are going back to um, as a college student, your resume should only be one page. So you might have several jobs um, throughout your um, throughout your, throughout your career so far, but um, list the important ones and then just bullet points the ones that are um, the other ones just to show that you know you have been working and the experience that that you have okay when listing an experience on a, on your resume be sure to include the role the contribution and the impact you'll want to clearly state the company that that you work for, right? The name, the job position, the dates, the location, and your responsibilities. Pay close attention to the tenses that you use, especially when describing previous jobs. So that's past and present tense, right? It's always um, a little bit confusing if you should be using past or present tense on your resume. So past jobs should be past tense. When listing out your responsibilities, it is always a good idea, idea to identify the to quantify your um, your responsibilities rather than to just um, say, oh, I improved um, X, Y, Z. So for example, if you are um, in charge of the social media for, for an organization, for a college organization that you're a part of, instead of just saying, I increased the social media presence, you can say, I increased our social media presence up 50% in the last year, right? And that would show that you're really doing a lot of work um, to increase your social media presence. And if you have multiple experiences and your resume is getting lengthy, is a good rule of thumb to list your, like I said before, to list your most recent experience, right? And the responsibilities that are most appropriate for the job you're looking for. And also, if you have a, if you have a, a job that um, you think might not be relevant to what you're doing, right? Like, let's say, for example, you worked at, I'll say Chick-fil-A, because that's my favorite fast food right now. If you worked at Chick-fil-A and you're thinking it's not, um, it's not relevant to being an accountant, right? But um, any job is relevant to, um, to the next job you're going to have, right? Because, for example, you had, a, you had a supervisor, you had to get to work on time, you had to do teamwork. I'm quite sure there's a lot of teamwork wherever you're working. Right, so all those experiences are relevant to your um, current situation and for your next job, right? No matter what it may be. So don't um, try not to not list something because you you think it's not relevant. It might be relevant and very important to show that you know that you're able to work, um, especially with a group and in a team setting. So this is an example of a resume. So this is a standard example of a resume that um, 
that we usually see. And as you can see, it is very neat. It's formatted properly. And like Anne said, it is one page, right? And um, so this is what we would expect to see from, from a resume. And we are, and um, the stickler is like, you know, if you're um, in college and you're applying for an internship or, or a first time job, it's like, one page is good enough. You don't, even if you have a whole bunch of experience, you need to um, tone it down to one page because there are a lot of resumes to read and it's better if someone sees your entire resume on a page and be able to get a better picture of you than if they have to flip. Okay, so now we are going to a resume building activity. Yep. yep, so similar to before, we are going to go ahead and drop from this main session and join the breakout rooms. Um, before we actually go to the breakout rooms, I wanted to pause here and see if anybody had any questions for Anne or Nadine before we go to our breakouts, because I know that was a lot of information. So you can come off mute or type in the chat box if you have questions. Um, I actually had a question. Um, sure. a, so what they call it, I understand that, that you were saying that for, for like our current, our, for our current positions, we should be using, um, present tense words, but like, uh, what, what happens if, if we, if we did the actual thing in the past, but, but we're still working in that position? Um, I would say, and correct me, somebody, if um, if you think otherwise, I would say that for your current position, whatever you're currently working on, it's in that in that um, bullet point in that area, it would be present tense, right? Because that's what you're doing. So I know sometimes you do certain things and you did it. Maybe it's a one-off, but I would still list it as um, present tense because that's the current job I'm working at. For sure. Thank you. Looks like we have another question in the chat box. If you still have space on your resume, can you add awards or volunteer work? Yes, you should always add your awards and your and your volunteer work. And so sometimes you're in college and you have and uh, you're not really working um, a paid job and you have volunteer work and awards that also count. You know, that could also count as part of your um, experience, right? Your um, your volunteer work can always count on part of your experience and it's good to add awards, you know, to show your, um, because basically you're trying to show, you're trying to show yourself off on a resume, right? So you want to put your resume in the best light possible. So if you received an award for anything, yes, you should put it on there, unless you don't have space. <laughs> and then we have one more question in the chat box. Would you recommend adding any interests to your resume or an interests category? I want to say if you have space, yes, you can add an interest to your resume because sometimes during an interview, um, you know, I might ask what your interests are. So if it's on a resume, I would probably bring it up, be like, hey, tell me about your interest in, I don't know, baking cookies. I don't like to cook. So, you know, I'd want to ask you about um, whatever your interests, whatever your interests are. And um, maybe that would make for a great um, discussion during the um, interview process. So yes, but that's one of the things that I would say, if your resume is short, then add it. But if you have a whole lot of information in your resume, um, you could not add it. And maybe you can also put it in your introduction. You know, when you were doing an interview and you're, um, and I ask you, tell me about yourself, you could always put your interests at the bottom. Like, you know, say, oh, and my main interest is X, Y, Z. All right, any other questions before we head into breakouts? We have one more how so people so a couple students were asking about 
putting these types of programs on their resume and you know where that could go in terms of category. So it really kind of depends on what your resume looks like. I would say, you know, if you're early on in your college career, such as you guys are, you don't have a ton of relevant experience yet, you can put programs like this under the experience section. Um, and in terms of, you know, um, Akila's question about how do you list certain programs like this, you know, you just say exactly what it is. So, you know, the name of the program, what the firm you participated um, in the program with, when it took place, and just a couple of quick key bullets summarizing what you learned. So, you know, for example, for Empower, you could write, you know, participated in Grant Thornton's Empower program, May 2021. Um, focus areas were, you know, resume development, professional um, development, uh, mentorship, and learned about diversity, equity, and inclusion. So, you know, just a simple kind of catch-all phrase or summary of what you really got out of that program. And it's not a one-size-fits-all, right? You know, you might um, put something a little bit different than the next person, but that's totally fine. So I hope that answers the, the few questions in the chat box that we had about that. And when we get back from breakouts, we can also answer more questions if you guys have them at the end. Perfect. All right, so now we can go ahead and drop from this main session and join the, the individual breakout link you all received in your agendas, and then we will reconvene here in about 15 minutes. So everybody is free to drop now.